Um, yeah, the team vibe is very different than last time when we were here. Um, look, I, for the last two years since I've been back, the vibe's been awesome. Um, I've been loving it. Um, there's a lot of onus and respect and accountability put on the players and I think the players being the professionals we are, we, we really leave no stone unturned as individuals. So, I mean, every time we go out there to play cricket, we're ready. So we'll be ready again. No, it's been a great Ashes. It's um, all three games have been so close. Uh, we've got a chance to win the Ashes again this game, and I think the guys are really excited by that. I think both teams. I think England's really excited by it too. They came off in one last game. I've had so many people text me from back home telling me how good this series has been, and comparing it to 2005, saying I'm, I'm, you know, it might even be better than 2005 at this stage. And it's just great to hear. It's great to hear. There's a lot of entertainment, a lot of people enjoying the cricket, and that's what you want at the end of the day. Wood's pace seemed to take it up a notch, looking from the other side of the fence. What was it like out there facing him? That first ball was pretty far, eh? yeah. He was, looked like he had his beans going a little bit. Um, no, I was at the other end for most of it. Marnus faced a fair bit, but it wasn't that. He was swinging it too. That's what made it a little bit more difficult. When you're bowling at that pace and just swinging it, that's what makes it difficult. And he was doing it beautifully. So, yeah, that first ball was pretty good. He bowled pretty well that first innings. And, um, no, he'd be done well in the first innings. Did you play a bad shot to him or did he get you out as soon as he got dry? No, it's just, it swung. If, if, you, if that ball didn't swing, I would have hit it. And it just swung late and 90, 90 odd miles. If you're off by a little bit, sometimes he gets you and he got me. You look at the overhead here, it's always seen some pretty blue. Pretty yeah, great weather, great weather in Manchester, yeah. you're right. <laughs> so, so look, do you still feel like these kind of conditions, he's again their most dangerous guy going into this <sighs> No, not necessarily. I, I mean, they're all dangerous, just like our bowlers. You give our bowlers these conditions, they're very dangerous too. So it's just the luck of the draw sometimes, what kind of weather you get. You love to bat at sunshine all the time in England, but you don't always get that. So I think both sides, whenever there's overcast conditions like this, are kind of licking their lips a little bit. So it's just what it is. Was, do you expect you'll be opening the batting with David Warner in this test? Uh, yeah. Just because of the squeeze, the positions on, do you think Dave will hold, do you expect Dave will hold a spot then? And, and what do you think might do otherwise? I think that's a question for that man that's there right there uh, to ask, not for me. So I'm just, I'm just going preparing the game, and yeah, I think if you want to ask anything about selection, you ask that fella. Yeah. I, was, I was just going. What did you make? Because there has been a bit of talk about that in the last week. Maybe you don't subscribe to. I don't subscribe to any of you. <laughs> <laughs> with love, with love. <laughs> but what, what, what have you made about? Sorry. What have you made about the fact there is some talk about whether Dave could potentially be squeezed out? Like, do you feel like it seems like every couple of tests we're having the same conversation? What do you make of it all? Look, with full respect, the media will write what sells newspapers, and I understand that. I've got nothing against it. Um, I respect that. I understand that. Um, he's probably the hot topic right now. I don't know because I don't really, as I said, I don't really read this stuff. And that, for that reason, um, you know, it's uh, at the end of the day, you go do your job, we go do our job. Um, if I will say anything, I still, you know, from my point of view, Dave Warner's been one of the greatest openers of all time. It's, it's him and Hados right up there for Australia, I reckon. That's top two ever. So um, I always back Davey no matter what. I think a lot of the other guys would too. And do you sort of feel like you guys have had three 50 plus run stands there? Like in the conditions you guys have had, like, how, um, like, it has that sort of, that, that, I guess you look at me, that's a pretty big contribution in the way it's able to set up the team and set up the innings, given the conditions you guys have faced. Yeah, it's massive. It's a thankless job. Like, we go out there at the start, and we had a really good start at Lords on really overcast conditions. I got out just last over before lunch, but it sets up the game for the rest, rest of the other team. Steve first see, comes down in the sunshine, he gets a bad sun, plays a beautiful 100. I think as an opener, sometimes you don't always just, you know, record your good days on how many runs you play. It also sometimes just about just grinding through those tough times, which we did in that test match. And I think we've had a, a three 50-run partnerships. And against Jimmy Anderson and Stuart Broad, I mean, that's as tough as it gets in England. So, yeah, you've got to do, pay some sort of respect to that. How is the minus going? I guess it's probably been a bit of a frustrating to him getting starts, not being able to convert. We all know his love for batting. How how is he in himself? Have you noticed anything different in Marnus? No, I mean he's just getting starts and getting out. It sucks. It doesn't always happen. He's normally a very good converter, but I have no doubt that at some level or click, at some stage or click, I expect him to get big runs in the next couple of games. He's 
he's too good not to if he keeps getting starts the way he is. So uh, it's just business as usual. Manus is pretty good. He's pretty level headed. I mean, it's just the way it is. I, it's one of those wickets that we played on throughout the whole time. I don't think any batsman's felt in at any stage. And that's England and Duke balls and weather and conditions. In Australia, sometimes you can kind of lock in and feel like, all right, I've got a tempo right now. I feel pretty good. I think I can stretch this for a while. Where, yeah, here it doesn't feel like that because the ball's always just doing enough, just nibbling about. So, I mean, you see that pace has dominated. You know, pace has dominated this whole fixture from the first three games, you know. I mean, behind the over rates a little bit. I, ICC have been stinging us a fair bit. Uh, Thankfully, they've come around and changed some of those uh, fines, which was killing me. So, whew, it was expensive. But no, it was good. Actually, on that, I appreciate the ICC. Actually, they actually listen to the players. We're on another topic that um, I've seen Khan there at ICC talk to us about um, a lot of the stuff and got feedback from the players. And it's the first time I've ever had that kind of communication with the ICC. So, on that topic, that was, it was really good what happened. I think no one's really mentioned that. And I thought I'd. <coughs> sorry. I thought I'd get out there and mention it because it's pretty cool. But yeah, at the same time, a lot of fast bowling's been bowled to your question. And yeah, it's just what it is. It was this time four years ago, you sort of got dropped between the third and the fourth test. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> but how, like, yeah, how um, uh, in, ter in terms of the opportunity to you know make a contribution in a game where you're Australian with the Ashes, like, how significant is that for you personally? Uh, I mean, I'd love to win the Ashes something that all of us would love to do. But I think I'm so process focused now, I try, it doesn't really bother me anymore. I go about my process, my focus, what I can do for the team. I feel like if I do that well enough and consistently enough and the other guys do that too, we can be the better team and win this Ashes. And if we do that, that's when I'll sit back and celebrate and really enjoy it. Right now, I'm not really thinking about it. But yeah, obviously coming back from Headingley last time, tough times. That was a tough point in my career. I thought my career was pretty much over there. Um, my wife was joking about it too. She was sitting up at um, Leeds. There's a little shopping mall. She was sitting up at the top there. She was like, yeah, last time I was here, it wasn't a good time. So I was like, no, it wasn't, honey. So uh, she was a part of it too. And it's just nice. You know, it's funny how things work out. I get to come back to England and, and actually play at Old Trap this time. Touch wood. I think, you know, I don't trip over myself. It's a very different vibe. The team's a very different place. I'm really just am enjoying this journey. And just uh, another thing, Ben Duckett said yesterday that when Alex Carey came out the bat, they didn't really need to say anything to him because the was doing it for them. Um, just, yeah, I suppose, you know, obviously, the, you know, the Lord's thing's been pretty high profile, but just your view on, I suppose, the reception that you've had over here and I suppose the fact that it's almost sort of mutually assured destruction if it's, you know, bad for the England guys in Australia versus you guys coming over here? I mean... Look, yeah, they're rough. I, if, to, if you talk about it to um, England guys, they say we're equally as rough when they come there, and I'm, I don't agree with it either way. I don't think it's the right thing to do. I don't think it's... You know, I personally, if I'm playing the cricket and I'm watching cricket, I wouldn't want my kids to be around that. And if I saw that, I'd 100% make a complaint or just leave. I think some of the stuff can be pretty poor. I mean, when we were at Edgebaston, they were calling Travis Head a CU, you know what? I'm like, I can't believe that you can actually say that in a public domain anywhere. So it can be a little bit disappointing at times. And I just, I think it's the same way in Australia. I think we can take it too far in Australia. Same thing happens in Australia. I'm not a big fan of that. I personally know watching a lot of sport, loving sports, it, it happens around the world. Watch the NBA happens there, uh, particularly when crowds can get real close to you, which they can in cricket. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it is what it is, but I necessarily don't agree with it. But doing it my whole life doesn't really bother me. And if it does, I'll let, I'll let them know. Just, there are three uh, members of the MCC currently looking at a review about whether they should still be a member there or, or a longer ban. You know, you've just mentioned their, this behaviour that you don't really want to see in cricket. Is there a place for that sort of person in the game over here? Uh, yeah, cool. I just won't comment on that. I think that's for the MCC to handle. It's got nothing to do with me at the moment. Okay, then going back to the cricket then. You mentioned about pace bowling. Um, Mark Wood, you know very well now. Is there anything you can do in training? Is there anything you guys are working on when somebody's coming at you and pushing 96 miles an hour? No, no, you face it all the time. I mean, Nokia was bowling us 
95, 96 mile an hour spells back in Australia. Like Mark Wood was sorry. Mark Wood was bowling <laughs> against when I came back at the SCG score twin hundreds, Mark Wood was playing that game too. He's always at you bowling well. Like I love him. Just like, you know, he's a good competitor, he's a funny, funny guy. Um, and he just runs in and gives everything for the team. I mean, he's great for the game. So no, I mean you're playing your whole life. You used to play fast bowling, you play fast bowling your whole career. If you if you can't handle fast bowling, you're not gonna make it in test cricket. Simple as that. And the, sorry, and the, the home crowd here, the home favourite is Jimmy Anderson. You know, potentially could be bowled with the Jimmy Anderson end if he, if he gets in. You know, is there a place for him in your heart as a, as a, as a cricket fan as well as a player? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was in Lancashire 2014 and got to know Jimmy a little bit. He was, he was a very quiet, reserved guy. I wasn't really quite sure how to take him. And then I somehow I, I was addicted to Call of Duty on PlayStation at the time, and so was he. And that's how he sort of broke the ice. He came to my room and started playing Call of Duty. He was, he was, he was crap at it. <laughs> <laughs> but it broke the ice, and then I started getting along with him pretty well after that. So now I've got a lot of time for Jimmy. He's been an outstanding cricketer for such a long time. He's got an own end named after him, so he must be doing something right. Uh, yeah, there's, I think there's always room for Jimmy Anderson in Tech Cricket. There's been obviously, uh, you mentioned you talked about Wood, and Wood likes to do things in fast forward, they like to play the game quickly, and one of the things they do well at uh, heading is using them in quite short, short bursts, four over spells, and, and stuff like that. What, what can you guys do better to make sure that he's coming back into like five, six, seven, eight over spells, and then maybe tiring that pace drop? Um. I'm not sure. How many wickets did it take second innings? Genuine question. I don't know. Two. So I think you've negated him a little bit second innings there. He wasn't, yeah, the demolish. I think Mo and Ali bowled a really good spell. If you're looking at that game, I think he's probably forgotten a little bit because he got Marnus and he got Steve Smith. Potentially, you know, our two best batsmen of the last few years. So I think that's what broke our back, really, that game, that innings and that run chase. Um, yeah, there was a team effort there. So it's just not Woody. If you worry about one bowler from my past, you worry about one bowler, the other bowler will get you out. So. Yeah, you got to worry about all of them. I was going to say, when you run through the top of the stuff, the ICC, how that chat came about? Yeah, I, no, no, I've known Wasim Khan. I think he was part of, uh, obviously, Pakistan. And I played in the PSL, that's where I got to know him. Obviously, English background. Um, he's from here. And, you know, just kept in touch. And then, obviously, he's now, I think, GM at the ICC. Uh, I was pretty frustrated with what was happening. I am an ACA board member, so I do look at what's around quick and what's happening. And I just thought someone's got to find a way to speak to the ICC about it because we had played three games and there'd been three really good games with results, entertainment. I mean, the World Test Championship was the highest watch test match I think ever, or something like that. It was just really good stuff, and we were getting fined 80% of our match fee. That's a lot of money, and it just frustrates. For the first test. And then for the second test, I think, actually it might have been the second test and then for the first test. One of them was 40, one of them was 80. Yeah. Um, and it's just really frustrating as a player because you're giving it all you're out there, you're providing entertainment, and then you're getting stung for it. So I just felt like uh, I needed to speak and Wasim was really good. I got him a text and he was really good. I texted him, I called him, we talked. He took the feedback back, he took it back. I think Paddy talked to him too and you know Andrew McDonald talked to him and to his credit, it wasn't just listening and no actions and actions happened pretty much within one or two weeks and they came back with us there was a bit of compromise something the players were happy with because we're trying to go as fast as we can it's the conditions that make it hard for us yeah. if we we're in india we're never behind the over rate because we've got two spinners going at it conditions in the game is what was played here but we were getting results that's what was frustrating i think england were frustrated with it too so to have wasim khan there actually listen to the players and get a bit of feedback and then find a compromise sort of position yeah, it's, it's the first time that I've been ever involved with cricket that something like that's happened to ICC and it's, I think it's a really good step forward, particularly having player feedback and doing that, so credit goes to Wasim Khan for that. What was the compromise? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well now it's, I think that's coming down, I think the release it's coming in at 5% now per over. I was pushing for 2.5, but... <laughs> 5% for over and then it's capped, capped, capped at 50. 50 and then it goes to 80 overs instead of 60 overs, what it was before. I still hasn't happened yet. I'm still pushing for personally as a player. If you get a result in the game, up to T. If you get a result before T last day, you shouldn't be any fines. You got what you wanted. It's only after that that I feel like maybe, all right, now you got the chance to hurry up the game along. But yeah, it's one of those things. It's, it's cricket. You have rules and laws there. They've been there for a very long time. Sometimes you just got to look back on them and see if you need to update them a little bit. You touched on, on the crowd behaviour before and, and lords and the, the footage of what happened has gone viral. Can you talk through what 
made you stop and, and address to the, uh, the MCC members? No. no I'm just going to leave it there. MCC are all over it. I trust them you know, to do the right thing. got to be honest, it's too hard when you're playing. If you start giving yourself a pat on the back and start feeling happy for yourself, it's probably where you're going to get stung. You just can't do it while you play. You've got to look at the next test match. Once once test match finishes, you've got to look at the next test match. You can't be like, oh, how good did I play last test match? Because last test match doesn't matter. You're probably going in there with a little bit more confidence, no doubt. But yeah, as I said, it's so process driven. That's one of the things. I think it won't be until maybe after my career where I'll look back and be like, OK, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. I don't think you can afford yourself. I don't think any player out there can afford themselves, you know, the ability to go out and try and actually do that. You just got to focus on the next game, which kind of sucks. But you know, I know what has worked for me in the past. So I just have to stick with it. Was he just taking um, sort of Davy personally out of it for the for the moment? Stuart Broad has a left hander. Like the, the uniqueness of the challenge he poses in terms of what he can do with the ball, you know, taking it away from you. I think Stewie Broad is a good bowler to both left and right hand. Yeah. It's like he's got money out a few times too. I think this, I mean, I've said it before, I love the way Broad he plays. Always plays with a smile on his face. He creates a bit of theatre. Uh, I think he plays the game in really good spirit. Um, I, I've always enjoyed battling against Broad. And uh, I, he's one of those guys that, you know, Jimmy Anderson's an unbelievable bowler. His consistency, he's done it for a long time. But something about Broad, you can just sometimes you can just change your game here and there. You just get, you just can get wickets in clumps. And that's what you've got to be wary of. When Brody gets his tail up, he might have two or three overs, four overs. It can be really tough work. You just have to be really on. Because you cannot, that's where you can just get on a little roll. So I think he's just a, he's just a good bowler. Just do, you, do you chuckle when he revs the crowd up? Yeah, he loves doing that, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is what it is. The crowd loves it, so why not?